Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. We're excited that Dr. Sinclair tweeted out about his new paper, which came out as a sneak peek on October the 27th. The paper explains the loss of epigenetic information theory of why we age and the experimental evidence for this. It's a comprehensive paper, and in this video, I will summarize the key points and cover a few of the experiments that the team ran. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper, Loss of Epigenetic Information as a Cause of Mammalian Aging, which is available in Cell Press as a sneak peek preview of papers which are currently under review. There are a number of authors credited in the paper, and Dr. David Sinclair is the lead contact. We all experience changes at the genetic and epigenetic level. The loss of cell identity caused by epigenetic changes has been seen in yeast. Similar changes happen in mammals, but the cause and whether this in turn is a cause or a consequence of aging is not known. To investigate, the team created transgenic mice, which they called ICE, for inducible changes to the epigenome. Using these mice, they show that the process of repairing non-mutagenic double-strand DNA breaks accelerates physiological, cognitive, and molecular changes, including the erosion of the epigenetic landscape, loss of cellular identity, cellular senescence, and the advancement of the epigenetic clock. The point of the non-mutagenic breaks is that the aging is not caused by changes to the DNA, but to the epigenetic layer incurred by the process of repairing these breaks. Epigenetic reprogramming through expression of three of the Yamanaka factors, restored the youthful expression. In the paper, the authors performed many tests in each area. I will pick one or two each to illustrate rather than go through all of them. Let's start with the ice mice. They created these so that when they were fed tamoxifen, extra DSBs would be incurred in their DNA through the activation of an introduced gene. When the tamoxifen was removed, the gene would be turned off and the process would stop. They also created some mice they called CRE, which had some of the changes but did not have double-stranded breaks as a control group. They tested cells in vitro with the same genetic makeup, which were exposed to tamoxifen and showed that it did indeed increase their epigenetic age. They first wanted to see if the double-stranded breaks caused accelerated aging at the cellular level. They did see an increase in senescent cells as shown by an increase in SA beta gal. And they checked for the expression of a number of other genes which are known to change with age. For example, lamin B, which is involved in autophagy, which is known to go down with age. And interleukin-6, a marker of inflammation, which in turn goes up with age. Next, looking at the phenotype. We can see that immediately after exposure, the two mice looked the same, but 10 months later, the ice mice had aged visibly. It's worth noting that the authors did not see other ill effects apart from the faster aging. Another measure of aging phenotype is the frailty index, which as we can see on the left-hand graph, increases with age. We can see it also increased ice mice relative to the controls. Next, they looked at the cognitive capacity of the mice. The freeze test is a test of a mice's ability to remember an unpleasant event and react to the same stimulus later. In this case, a mild electric shock. When the same prompts are presented, if the mouse remembers the event, it will freeze. Again, the left-hand graph shows the normal decline with age and the right-hand one shows the accelerated decline of the ice mice relative to the control. And looking at the mouse's physical performance, with the left showing the normal decline and the right showing the decreased performance of the ice mice. And the epigenetic age of the mice, where they saw accelerated epigenetic aging in the ice mice. The epigenetic landscape as a way of thinking about cell fate was first proposed by Conrad Waddington, where as cells become further differentiated, they take on a particular cell type and cannot change to another. 
One of the impacts of the loss of epigenetic information is that cells become more liable to express features of other types of cells as they lose their identity. The authors proposed and tested that the cells in the ice mice were more liable to change roles, showing a weakening of the definition of the cell. For the final test, they delivered the OSK genes from the Yamanaka factors to the mice with a viral vector, which could be enabled or disabled with doxycycline. What they saw was that this could counteract the effects of the early aging. To summarize, during mammalian development, cell types become fixed and migrate to the valleys in the Waddington landscape that we just discussed. Why mammals lose epigenetic information over time is currently debated. But the results of the study indicate that disruptions to the epigenome, such as double-stranded breaks, cause the landscape to erode and the epigenetic age to advance, which leads cells to move to adjacent valleys and lose their identity. In the experiment, they showed that DNA breaks alter the epigenome in ways similar to aging. And so they argue that these DSBs lead to epigenetic aging. And that this process is the base cause of aging in eukaryotes, where eukaryotes are organisms with a nucleus in their cells, so roughly everything more complex than a bacteria. From this, they say that they have identified the molecular driver of epigenetic changes, which in turn drives the aging process. The DNA damage caused in the ice mice did not cause mutations. So these were not the reason for the accelerated aging. Rather, it was the cell's reaction to the breaks. This does help explain why epigenetic clocks work, as although the breaks are random, the process to repair is not, and the epigenetic changes with age are predictable. It's great to see Dr. Sinclair fleshing out his theory of aging and providing the experimental evidence to back it up. I like that it addresses the predictability of epigenetic change that theories based on random damage do not. The link to the paper is in the description. You can download the PDF for free if you register.